Back to follow-up segment tonight. Ten days ago, a 25-year-old British soldier murdered in the streets of London. Muslim jihadists and an accomplice killed a man in broad daylight. Then they went in front of a camera to rant about it. Subsequently, 10 other Muslims were arrested in the case. That led to a number of anti-Muslim demonstrations. This issue is political Islam. That man you just saw leading the anti-Muslim movement is Tommy Robinson, who heads up the Militant English Defense League. I spoke with him a few days ago. Mr. Robinson, why don't you define your group for us and why you became involved in it? We're a street protest movement, a pressure movement to put pressure on our politicians. Um, we started four years ago due to an inability by the government or the police to tackle radical Islam. Our soldiers in Luton were abused on a homecoming parade by militant Islamists. And um, that was the final straw, basically. In this country, we've watched and everyone's watched as our country goes down the pan. Right. Political correctness is ruling it. And quite frankly, Islamism and terrorism, Sharia law is out of control in Britain. Now, in Britain, uh, the Muslim population has pretty much doubled in 10 years, 2001-2011. Why is that? Why, why are so many uh, Muslims coming to Great Britain? It doubles every 10, 10 years. It's not just that they're coming here, it's the average birth rate. Um, a Muslim male in this country is having 5.6 children, a non-Muslim male is having 1.3. Now that wouldn't be so much of a, of a problem if they were integrating or assimilating in any way. But they're not. And quite frankly, if we bury our heads in the sand, we are sleepwalking into an oblivion in this country. What does the government want to do with the Muslim population in Great Britain? What's their goal? Well, it seems like their goal, it seems like they're terrified of them and they pander to them. Um, David Cameron at present, is, he's like the boy that's been bullied and he's trying to make friends with the bully because he's too scared to stand up to him. Um, they're constantly pandering to Islam and they're constantly worried about what the Islamic community will do and how they will react to anything. And they're always fearful of offending Muslims, whereas in reality, the British public are offended on a daily basis. Okay, but Cameron and all says, at the moment is... Cameron says, quote... It's not enough to target and go after violent extremists after they become violent. We have to drain the swamp in which they inhabit. It looks like the prime minister is getting tough on them. No? No, it's not. No, not at all. Every prime minister said that. Tony Blair, Gordon Brown. When you look at what they say in, real, in reality to what they actually do, actions speak a lot louder than words. We're scared. We're, we're, we're in the trenches here. We're on the front line trying to fight for Christianity, fight for our children's future, fight for our culture and fight for our country's identity, which is completely under attack. I lived in London for a year and I don't understand why you say the prime minister and the powers that be in the parliament are afraid of the Muslims. What are, what are they afraid of? If, if certain Muslim groups are causing trouble, as you assert they are, it would think that the, the English people would want to crack down. Why would the government be afraid of that? Well, to be honest, when you look deep-rooted, I'd say they're afraid of them because of the money they've got in this country. I believe they own 48% of our stock market. Every port in this country is owned by Saudi Arabia. Our main shopping centres, our football clubs, they've, they've, they've got our government like that. And they may have bought our government, but they won't buy the people. And as we say, fear is paralysing. They are scared. And our political elite and our political leaders are paralysed with fear. It's for saying anything. believe that Due they the would be paralysed with, with fear, though. I mean, it, if you've got a violent group, and, you, and look, we have the same problem to a much less extent in America if you've got some people the FBI watches those people here and if they step out of line they get smacked here and nobody in America objects to that and, and, unless they're loons but in your country well, they, they, you, what you're asserting is that the establishment is afraid of these people and and therefore doesn't move against them they're terrified of them they're terrified of them. They have done nothing. This, this group, Anjem Chowdhury, it has radicalised so many Muslims. 30% of the Muslims in prison are ex-members of this group, al Mujahideen. Our government have done nothing to stop them. Our government can't even identify the problem. They can't even identify the enemy. They, our government stood on TV earlier, earlier today, David Cameron, and said that he's got, he wants to combat groups like the English Defence League demonising Islam.
All we do is speak facts and truth. We don't hate Muslims. That we, I believe a lot of these Muslims are the first victims of Sharia and Islam. But the fact is, Islam is not a religion of peace. It never has been. It never will be. Okay, but and when you say that, when you say that, say that and when, when you say you want to protect Great Britain uh, as a Christian nation, which you said earlier in this interview, then you come across as somebody who does have an agenda, an anti-Muslim agenda, because of religious reasons. And you well know, uh, Mr. Robinson, that you've been called a fascist, a racist, and your group has been de uh, described by the British press as that. Yeah, we're described as far right. We have a Sikh division, a Hindu division, a Jewish division. We even have a lesbian and gay division. That weak argument by calling us hooligans or racists or fascists is just the easiest way to stifle the debate because then they don't actually have to address the points we're bringing up. But what's happening right now in this country, we're gaining so much support from so many different people that they're going to have to address these points. Now, Lee Rigby's death will be the death that has changed this nation. All right, Mr. Robinson, we appreciate you coming on. Thanks again. Thank you.